number 24. Yes, this is a very familiar passage. However, I'm, I'm certain now that God wants us to hear something directly for this house. Joel chapter number 2, verse number 24. Once you have it, if you would stand to your feet as we want to acknowledge the reading of God's word. And the word of the Lord reads, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I send among you. And ye shall eat plenty. Somebody shall plenty. Yay. And satisfy and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Today I want to speak to you from the subject. This is my season of restoration. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know somebody tell them this is my season for restoration. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This is my season yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, God. for restoration. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Restore is a word that indicates a process or the ability to be renewed or refreshed. One of the examples that I've given time and time again concerning restore is the example of a car. I feel you, Sister Jolene, and I believe God's going to do something for you today. I feel it. I feel it. Thank you, Lord. Restore. The example I like to use is about the car. You can take a 1950 Mustang and you can take it for its value right now where the mustang may not have good seats the mustang may have an older engine there may even be a paint job that needs to happen and that mustang can be worth every bit of a hundred dollars yeah. however you can take the same mustang and take it through a process. Somebody shout a process. a process. Well, this process of restoration, that same 1950 Mustang, you can invest in it and you update the paint on it. You update the engine and the horsepower in it. You update the interior in it. You can even put pipes on it. And you could even cut out the roof and put a vent in it or make it a convertible. And the same Mustang that was worth $100 now becomes an antique in today's time. And could be worth tens of tens of thousands of dollars. Now the only reason why a person would get excited about restoration is when you feel like maybe you have lost something. So in order for us to get clarity on what Joel was talking about, we must first, first revisit Joel chapter number one. Verse number four is where we're introduced to what maybe several of you all in this building or all over the world may be experiencing right now. But Joel chapter number one, verse number four says, That which the palmer worm had left Jesus. hath the locust eaten. Which means there is situations that find themselves pulling from you 
time and time again. Uh, the Bible says Job, when he was going through, that while he was yet speaking, another person came with more bad news. Uh, is there anybody in here that you had bad news on Monday and, yeah. and before Tuesday could get here somebody else or a letter or yes, a text, Lord. by Monday evening you've got more bad news. News. And the Bible says that to Job, as Job was yet speaking, another one came and said, listen, I know that you've lost uh, your, your sons and I know you've lost your house, but yes, now yes. you've also lost your servants. And see, sometime when you're going through like that, Brother Brandon, you start to question whether God even exists. Not, not whether he exists for me, but whether he exists at all. But see, what I love about God is when you find yourself in a position where things are happening back to back to back that only means that it's just a setup. Why don't you lean on somebody and tell them it's just a setup. Just a setup. So verse number four says that which the power worm had left had the locust eaten and that which the locust had left had the canker worm eaten. Hold on. So Lord um, so my, my, my marriage is already under attack. And but the locust didn't just stop there. My, my, my. He sent his buddy the canker worm. <laughs> and so the canker worm now is attacking my money. Come on. Come on, and, and, and what the canker worm left, now there's a palmer worm and a caterpillar that, that now, I, I call them the three M's, your ministry, your money, and your marriage. Yeah. Uh, and see, what, what you have to understand is when that happens, generally God is allowing it to happen so that you can know that it's just a setup. Yeah. For the Bible says this, that when he allowed it to happen, he didn't cause it, but he did allow it. It was the children of Israel's disobedience. Well. See, disobedience will cause things to continue to eat away at you. Being disobedient will cause things to devour you. So when you heard Brother Brandon's testimony about tithing, one of the qualifications of tithing is this. He will rebuke the devourer for your sake, which means he will rebuke the locust. He, he will rebuke the canker worm. He will rebuke the palmer worm. But see, as long as you're walking in disobedience, hey, come on, mama. You all you qualify for is to maintain. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. See, there's some of us that's walking in disobedience, and we don't understand why we don't get the blessing. Come on, come on. Blessing is directly connected to obedience. And remember this: half obedience is still disobedience. Oh, that means that if you're halfway doing it, you might as well not be doing it at all. See, I need you to understand. And see, when I say not doing it at all, you got to know you for you. You. You got to get in your prayer closet for real and say, God, okay, I get it. I obey in this area and I obey in that one. But I sure don't obey in that one. See, as long as you're trying to give an excuse for the reason why you don't obey, you just qualify to maintain. You're on the Christian maintenance program instead of the kingdom elevation program. See, there's more Christians than not that's on a maintenance program, which means I'm just existing. Uh, you know, I, I ain't not necessarily being taken away, but I'm not getting anything either. It's because you you haven't in, engaged into the kingdom elevation program. So now the tribe of Judah, because of their disobedience, verse number five says, awake ye drunkards and weep. And how all ye drinkers of wine. So disobedience will lead you to a drunken state. Yes, yeah. See, and I'm not talking about the kind of drinking that you gotta, you may get a DUI for. Because there are some Christians that's spiritually drunk yeah. off the wrong thing. And you don't understand why the locust, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, uh, why the canker worm are all pulling from you. But verse 6 says this, for a nation has come up on my land strong. And without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he had the cheek teeth of a great lion. Now, the reason why this is important is this was the tribe of Judah. One of the qualifications or characteristics of Judah was the lion of Judah. See, it's amazing how we can have a tenacious mindset and still not get a blessing from God yet. It's interesting how we would do church, but we still don't do kingdom yet. Well, the Bible says that they start losing stuff. Lean on somebody say losing stuff. Losing stuff. See, there was a time in my life where I 
I was losing stuff back to back to back. And see, if you're not careful, you become over sanctimonious. And now you start justifying spirit. You'll go find a scripture for the reason why you're losing stuff. And you, you'll start saying stuff like Satan yeah. is doing. Yeah. But see, you don't understand your disobedience activates loss. I need you to hear this. So that's the reason why you got to make it up in your mind. I'm going to align myself in obedience no matter what. Somebody shout no matter what. No matter what. And see, it's hard to obey when you don't feel like obeying. Come on now. When the situation is not conducive for obedience, it's hard to obey. It's hard to get in the trenches and do what this Bible says when emotionally you're battling and you're torn. Which is the reason why you have to stabilize your emotions with the word of God. You don't just wake up one day and walk in obedience. God will allow things to happen. And I know you're deep. I know you may have been born saved, but that wasn't my testimony. And even as I look at Jesus, the Bible says it like this. That Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. See, unfortunately, we're not smart enough to obey from day one. Come on, come on, tell it. Yeah, I don't care how much you Holy Ghost and shun that at my cool. I don't care how many tongues you speak in. I don't care how many people lay hands on you. They can't lay hands on you and you obey. Right. Come on, come on. Yeah, your obedience has to come from within. And obedience, I'm telling you, suffering will squeeze obedience out of you. There was times in my life where I was half obeying God. And what I realized is when I, the more I disobey First Lady, the more... Obedience was flattering me in the face. The more I disobeyed, the more suffering happened. Yeah, that's right. And the more I tried to do it my way, the more I saw the locust, the pommel worm, the canker worm. The longer I was doing it my way, those things began to digress more and more and more. So now they get to a place where Joel now is teaching them and said, "Listen, you guys have lost a bunch of stuff." And it comes to a point in time where you got to make a major adjustment in order to get God to move for you. So if you go down to verse number 14, he said, listen, now that I gave y'all all the stuff that's going wrong in your life, these are the instructors. Sanctify ye affairs. Call a solemn assembly. See, I need you to understand this. Sanctify means to set apart. And fast doesn't necessarily mean you just push the plate away one day. You have to start to have a consecrated lifestyle yes. where you're willing to deny your flesh on a regular basis. For some of us, that means TV. Come on. For some of us, we need to learn how to cut the remote off. And you, you, that's a fast for you. Because you can't wait for the reality TV shows to come on every night. Because that's a part of your flesh. So a part of fasting is not just pushing away the plate. Or anything that has to do with denying yourself. So he said, listen, all this stuff has been happening. So I get it that there's a lot of stuff going on in your life. But when was the last time you sanctified yourself? And I'm not talking about sanctified churches either. You know, where you think that if they ain't saying, I know God is a good God. Yes, I yes. I know God is a good, good God. Yes, he is. Yeah, that's not sanctified church just because they speak in tongues or just because they don't wear certain pants, just because they don't wear makeup. No, he said sanctify yourself, not your church. You got to make it up in your mind that I'm going to set myself apart. Sanctification literally means to be set apart for the kingdom shoes. So now he says, listen, before this thing get fixed, yeah. come on. Come on now. Get fixed. you got to sanctify yourself. Lean on somebody say, sanctify, sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. So he says, sanctify yourself, call a fast, a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God. Listen, that's what today is. Today is a solemn assembly. And the Lord said, listen, I'm going to restore the years. But in order for restoration to happen, you got to call a solemn yes. assembly. And see, the solemn assembly wasn't just anywhere. It says the solemn assembly was in the house of the Lord your God. And he said, once you get them, everybody in the same place. There's only one qualification. For restoration to happen, it says, and cry out unto the Lord. 